Hi, everyone, and, and welcome to the latest episode of the Orchestration Kitchen here at Strata Identity. Today, I'm joined, as always, by Chef Terry Cozard, who's a member of our solutions engineering team. And also, we have a special guest today. We've got Chef Granville, who is joining us from the kitchen of the CTO here at Strata, where he's also a principal architect and sous chef. We're excited to have you join us today because we're going to be talking about how do you integrate three decades worth of Microsoft identity products and how do you do so with skill and grace? Because there's so many different generations of, of services that are available. And so, you know, Chef Terry, as you and I were talking about this this morning and, and, and we're thinking about the, the flow of today's session, I um, wanted to just bring up, you know, okay, so as, as we think about three decades worth of identity services and uh, and, and the, the like at, at Microsoft, um, can you go ahead and bring up your screen so we can take a look at what the flow of today's session will look like? Absolutely. So um, as we think about getting three decades worth of products, we uh, cra crafted this agenda as we're going to go through it today. First and foremost, just to reset, what is identity orchestration? That's a term that you hear a lot in the marketing of uh, of security these days. But what do we mean when we mean that? Well, then talk about the recipe white bar, where we've done this type of product or this pattern for uh, for you in the past. And then we're going to start cooking with the uh, new cookbook uh, uh, that Chef Granville is going to help us with. And then, of course, we'll always have Q&A available for us as well. Does that still work for you as an agenda, Mark? I think that works great. And I think what's really fun, you know, we purposely crossed that recipe here today because we're actually talking about a, a new type of a resource that we have here at Strata. And those are those are cookbooks. And uh, we'll get into what a cookbook is, but just think about it as something a lot more than just a recipe. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of bait everyone's appetite with that for a moment. But let's go ahead and start as we do with every one of these sessions, Chef Terry, with a quick overview of what is identity orchestration so that everybody kind of knows what it is, the underlying technology that we're going to be talking about today. Absolutely. Identity orchestration, as we think about it, is the ability to abstract away all of the common identity related services that you could ever really need in an application. It doesn't matter that the application that we're protecting is modern, something that understands SAML or OIDC, or if it's just written at an earlier time, something that used to be maybe protected by SiteMinder, Oracle Access Manager, or any of those. But the orchestration allows you to then mix and match, add or change any of the services. So if you wanna move away from SiteMinder in favor of Enter ID, perfect. The orchestration fabric makes that trivial. If you wanna add, a uh, different MFA, even beyond perhaps what you already have. Maybe you have organizations that have standardized on certain types of MFA that aren't in Microsoft's ecosystem. The Fabric can make that easy. And we do that throughout all of the different um, uh, components that you might want to integrate with. Then the secret sauce is actually really in the lower right-hand corner. We think it's our job to do the last millimeter integration to that application, regardless of what the application is or how it behaves. It's our job to make sure that we can represent to that application that the user is authenticated and authorized because we've then brought them through all of the modern steps um, that we've abstracted away so that you don't have to rewrite that application. The last thing we believe you should ever be spending your valuable time, effort, and energy on is to rewrite applications just to get them up to current standards. That's what the fabric is designed to do. That's awesome. And, and I know that we always want to reinforce the fact that we're not burying the lead here is that we talked about that secret sauce because, you know, of course, we're in the kitchen. But nevertheless, that secret sauce is important here because what we're doing, just as you said, we aren't changing the applications. We are actually doing all of this without touching the apps, which actually is really important because we talk about multi-generational identity services and applications. And on today's episode, you know, we're thinking about certain services that might be almost 30 years old. And so as we think about applications that might've been running on that, we might not have access to that source code anymore. We may not have any idea how the app works, but you're saying we can do all this without touching the app. That's exactly what I'm saying. In almost all cases, you can do it where the application doesn't know the world around it's changed. But in reality, we've uh, modernized it and using all of the modern uh, constructs. And then the application itself sits in a little walled garden all by itself. 
I love it. Well, and, and you know, I think that's actually a really good segue. So for level setting, we, you talked about you know modernizing uh, identity. So in the past, we have talked about how do you modernize uh, a non-standard legacy application with Entra ID, or formerly known as as Azure ID. And so as we think about that that workflow, we had done that before. Do you have that handy? I do. Let me go ahead and bring that slide up. So this is the actual wireframe of a uh, previous uh, kitchen. But the idea here is simple, that as a user who's traversing from the upper left to a legacy application in the upper right, they have to go through the orchestrator. The orchestrator can sit up network as it is it shown here, or it can even sit on the web server itself. But the idea here is that the orchestrator knows all the modern things that you may want to integrate with it. So as a user tries to get to the application on the right, we intercept the traffic, we send them out to enter ID to do what it does really, really wonderfully. And then once you've successfully authenticated, you may or may not have conditional access or MFA or whatever Entra may be uh, enforcing from policies, it comes back to the orchestrator. We then can go do the extra step to go get additional information from maybe an LDAP or an HR platform or wherever the data wants to exist. And then we can supersize that token to the application um, so that it natively thinks that Sidewinder is still there. It natively thinks that its login form is actually still behaving the way that it always has. So that's really the idea that we've done. And traditionally, we've uh, done this for a lot of our customers. Well, you supersized my appetite. I'm, I'm hungry for more. Let's talk about the Microsoft Cookbook. So this was just one recipe in the work that Strat has done in the past for uh, modernizing identity. And in that case, it was migration of uh, off a legacy WAM uh, system, such as SiteMinder, uh, Oracle Access Manager, to a modern cloud one like Entra uh, ID. So what we announced uh, just earlier this week is a new cookbook. And so let's talk a little bit about what a cookbook is. So I mentioned, you know, we had the strike through over the word recipe. A cookbook does contain recipes. I don't want to confuse people too much there, but it contains a lot more. It contains additional functionality and additional capabilities that we've seen, uh, that we've developed here at Strata that allows you to take full advantage of your existing investment in Microsoft services. And so as we look across this, delicious uh, illustration you brought up here for us, Chef Terry, is the fact that we can do a lot of things. So, uh, you know, if I just looked around the circle a little bit here, there's the idea that we can do uh, session translation. We can turn IWA and, and, and NTLM into a, a SAML or OIDC assertion so that you can take something uh, and, and make it uh, uh, cloud friendly. We talked about the idea that you can actually extend Microsoft Entry ID and MFA to unmanageable apps. That that scenario would be very similar to that, that one you were just showing. Uh, is that true, Chef Terry? Yeah, that's exactly right. So any of those legacy applications are, are within reach now without rewriting them. It's pretty neat. Awesome. Well, you know, I, I know that we also hear from customers that they want to extend their their E1 license in Entry ID and, and Azure ID. Uh, but as as they're looking to get the most value out of it, they they realize that they don't want to have to rely on these other point solutions, other other vendors to allow them to project Entry ID security and policies to other clouds. And so, what we also announced is that we can, with an orchestrator, you can actually secure apps that are hosted on AWS uh, as well. And we we talked about that risk engine and being able to ingest risk signals. As we think about Microsoft Defender, we could look at risky user signals and, and actually use those as, as an indicator as we think about CAE uh, uh, and continuous access evaluation. I mean, there's just so much goodness that's, that's in this cookbook that it just really gets me excited. You know, Now, what about some things that take a lot of effort, but maybe are a little anticlimactic. You know, Chef Terry, you and I often talk about the fact that the best identity demos are, are very boring because they just work. There isn't a whole lot of whiz bang, flash bots and all these exciting things. It's just the thing works. Well, an example of that is that we are now able to use Windows uh, Microsoft authentication to extend to any Mavericks protected app. So we're all familiar with that experience of logging on to your laptop or your desktop first thing in the morning and using the, the Windows login experience. Um, so what I understand is we can now actually use that to access any Mavericks protected app as well. Is that right, Chef Terry? That's exactly right. So now we have even more breadth and capability than uh, we previously had, and we pr previously had quite a bit. So we're rounding it out to where we can't imagine very many scenarios where we can't help you in this kind of ecosystem. 
I love it. I mean, ADFS, people are trying to get off ADFS and we're, we're certainly helping people move to, to enter ID uh, uh, there. People are looking to move from authentication on Active Directory to, to enter ID. Um, but it's it's not always as straightforward. You know, we, we one thing that does come up is we think a bit a little bit, we have this arrow for a resilience up there. We had a recent uh, kitchen, uh, Chef Terry, where you and I talked about what happens if you lose access to the cloud? And what, what could happen here in terms of like a, a failover to a local option? Yeah, absolutely. So that's one of the interesting things that we're talking to more and more people about is sometimes rainy days just happen. And that's just a normal part of living in a complex world. And sometimes maybe somebody digs up the fiber optics outside of the key facility, but you still need the work to be done. Maybe you have retail facilities that are in hurricane zones and you need the stores to continue to operate even when there's no ability to interact with cloud hosted anything. So that's another place where the orchestration fabric can keep you up and running. We can pivot to something that may be local. Perhaps there's an in, uh, instance of Active Directory that may be mm. nearby. So we can use that to do authentication. We can use other local things to do MFA. So we can still continue to keep your key applications up and running, regardless of what rainy day scenarios may happen in, in your environment or in the environments that you may be integrating with. That's great. And, and so what we're talking about here also is we're not just saying that we're going to take Active Directory completely out of the equation because there's still a lot of valuable things that Active Directory does. It, it contains some really useful attributes and, and uh, information. It can be used for other network-related uh, security things. But what we are talking about is that authentication process. And you know I think this is probably a good point to bring in uh, a guest expert that we have on this because one of the things that we have listed in the new cookbook is this idea of an AD authentication facade, which sounds intriguing. And Chef Grandel, do you think you could walk us through a little bit about what this is? is? Uh, yes, Chef. Well, first off, I it is a true pleasure to be invited to join you two amazing chefs in this kitchen. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, this is a really cool new technology that Strata has, and it's super exciting. What we've heard from customers um, over the last year is, you know, sometimes they have applications that utilize Active Directory for authentication. And some of those applications do what's known as a simple bind. And it's just a really easy way where they send across a clear text username, a clear text password, and then they're able to authenticate. But some other times that uh, they had these other applications which are hard coded to utilize a older version of an authentication protocol known as NTLM. Now, NTLM dates back to 1993. It is a very oh. old protocol. A little, little bit of history there, right, Chef? Yeah. Right? I mean, we're, we promised 30 years of history and we're delivering right now. 30 years <laughs> and it's insane. And it's an upgraded version of its predecessor, which was known as uh, the land manager. And so there's a lot of these uh, older applications that are mission critical for companies and they no longer have the source code or the ability to change these applications to be able to utilize a newer protocol such as Kerberos. And what we've seen uh, for these applications is they have, they're, since they're so mission critical, um, they oftentimes hold a lot of like sensitive information and data, and they need to be able to protect them using a more modern authentication mechanism. And they typically need like MFA for these applications and better auditing and logging. And so after we've heard this from multiple customers, we set out to um, create a way to be able to solve this problem for these applications. And again, the core problem here is that these applications, they're like the meat of this organization. And they rely on, um, on this older protocol. So there's no way to change it via config. And the way that we solve this is uh, using a pattern I like to think of as sandwiching an application. You, you talked about the meat in the middle. We, I, I was wondering if that was a sesame bun, but it turns out we actually are, are talking about a sandwich here today on the kitchen. Yes, yes. Um, and so I like to think about it as like, we sandwich this application and we sandwich it, instead of like having buns, we're sandwiching it with uh, our orchestrator. And so what you've seen previously in uh, previous uh, kitchens was we were able to have our core orchestrator proxy traffic and 
uh, do modern authentication for applications and ensure that those applications um, receive the data that they were expecting. However, these other uh, applications, they have this back channel communication with Active Directory. And so even though we can try to send it all the information that it needs, the key part here is that a lot of its internal logic around authorization and understanding who the user is, um, is all done back channel. And so what we do here is we're able to put an orchestrator um, using a configuration to act as an LDAP provider on the back end. So it's able to respond to these LDAP requests. And then on the top of the sandwich, we have the orchestrator acting as a proxy, authenticating the user, enforcing policy, and it's able to share the information that the backend orchestrator needs um, to be able to authenticate the user and to be able to uh, give the application the attributes that it requires, such as like email, employee ID, full name. And those attributes can come from a modern IDP, such as intra ID. Love it. I mean, so what we're talking about here is we've taken something that was literally potentially three decades old. And and and, and you talked about there's a lot of mission critical apps that, that rely on this. What I'm hearing, and I think this is probably uh, of interest to a lot of the people I was looking at the registrations for this kitchen before we began, regulated industries is that and, and government. I, I'm hearing a lot of that in the back of my head. Would that ring true, uh, Chef Granville? Uh, yes, Chef. It's uh, those two are the most common for sure. Got it. Got it. And and I mean, it almost feels like, you know, what were they doing before? Is this there was a decision that like perhaps they would even sunset some of these applications because they didn't know how to, to modernize or protect them? Yeah. Uh, chef, it's it's interesting. And I think it depends on per organization. You know, internally, a lot of these um, these types of organizations, they'll run like an inventory of their applications to understand like, hey, what is up to our standards and what is not up to our standards? And there's these uh, older applications which may have not been up to their standards and they deferred making a decision on them. And you know sometimes they were able to sunset them, but other times, uh, and I would argue more often, is that they're so critical to the organization, they haven't been able to shut them off. And they, and because of their criticality, they need to be able to you know, enforce newer um, policy on them and be able to use more modern authentication and require MFA. And because of this, they're stuck in a, between a rock and hard place, right? It's, they need, they need a solution and there's just nothing out there today that can truly solve this end to end. I love it. And now they're stuck between two sesame seed buns and, and the world's looking a lot brighter as they, they have a, a new opportunity to to do this. And, and I think, Chef Terry, you and I were both nodding at the same time. The thing I also heard about a 30 some odd year old uh, protocol is security lapses. And, I, and, I, I, and I, I know you talked about that a little bit, Chef Granville, in, in the reason for this. But like, first and foremost, we're, we're securing these apps. That That's the most important thing throughout here and, and plugging some of those gaps with these uh, lovely sesame seeds. I can't know uh, really in, in this, this technique. Stand true? Uh, yes, Chef. Awesome. Awesome. Chef Terry, did you have anything uh, about our, our delicious sandwich here? You know, I was actually thinking as, as Chef Granville was talking about is that one of the reasons that this is an important thing for a lot of customers is that the these type of applications, there's they're still around for a reason. They're mission critical to the business. And it's not uncommon in a complex even app in a complex environment, even one that isn't heavily regulated, to see these applications. I've talked to people who um have bespoke applications that behave this way that quite literally close the seat belts on amusement park rides. And so these are the kinds of things that still have really important purpose in an organization, but it was just written a little while ago, but it still needs to be a first class citizen as it relates to security. And now we're able to do that. I love it. And, and you know, one thing that actually came to my mind, Chef Granville, as I was looking at this is, we don't want to oversimplify this too much because there's, there's, there's this is a really complex problem. So there were certainly attributes that were probably in the LDAP uh, side of things that were that were being relied on prior. And and how do we reference those now that that we've created this sandwich of sorts with an orchestrator on the other side? Yeah, that's a great question, Chef. Uh, so oftentimes you'll see applications that rely on these attributes that are coming from, say, on-premises Active Directory. 
oftentimes they're pulling just the right amount of attributes for them to be able to do um, certain operations in that application to be able to pull the rest of the information for a user. And so some of those attributes could just be like, hey, give me this user's user, like employee ID, their email, um, and a few other things. And uh, often, and so for this particular pattern, those attributes come from the IDP. And we're able to ac accomplish this. So for ex we're able to accomplish this by, uh, by using the sandwich because with the uh, orchestrator acting as an identity aware proxy and um, communicating with say intra ID, when that user finishes their authentication process and they're authorized for this application, we take all of the attributes that are required by that application and we store it so that the orchestrator on the bottom of the sandwich, when it responds to um, an LDAP search request asking for those attributes, we're able to return those attributes to them. And so they're actually coming from intra-ID in this case. That makes great sense. Wow. I mean, tasty, delicious, complicated sandwich, but boy, got me hungry for more. You know, I, I think there's there's a lot to unpack in, in the cookbook that we announced this week. And and Chef Granville, this was just, you know, one certainly one of the most complex new integrations that we we announced, but also just one of. And Chef Terry, as, as we think about, you know, bringing this to a, to a close today, really we wanted to just sort of whet everyone's appetite as they thought about what it is. They've got different aspects of Windows identity, different, uh, you know, uh, things across the board as they think about Microsoft uh, investments that they've made over the years and how do they make all these multi-generational services work together. And 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 the, the, the great thing here is that we are that hub that makes them all work together. You can really extend your investment uh, in 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 Microsoft Enter ID and 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 get the most out of everything that you hope for from uh, the folks in Redmond. And so, what a wonderful session! You know, I, I would invite everyone to go take a look at the uh, cookbook that is live on Strata.io, as well as be sure to follow us in the Orchestration Kitchen Hub for our next episode. We have all of our previous episodes available for replay there, and also you can register for all of our upcoming ones as well. Chef Granville, it was an absolute pleasure having you join us today, and we can't wait to have you back as a guest uh, again sometime soon. Thank you, chefs. Truly an honor. Appreciate awesome, it. Awesome. Awesome. Chef Terry, bring us to a close. What, what if people want to get start cooking themselves? Hey, it's super easy. So in order, if you want to start cooking with this recipe or any others, um, you can sign up for a free trial on mavericks.strata.io. That'll give you an opportunity to get your own tenant, get your hands dirty. It'll also give you an opportunity to engage with me or somebody on my team to give you a brief introduction of what we built for you and how to best leverage it. Or if you have questions directly of me, please don't ever hesitate to reach out. You can always catch me at terry at strata.io. More than happy to help. Awesome. Well, well, chefs, this was this was a fun one. We 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 went so much more than just a recipe today. We talked about an entire cookbook, and there's a lot to unpack. We can't wait to to talk to our audience, you know, about your thorniest and spiciest Microsoft identity challenges. Bring them our way. We're here to help, you know, and that's why Terry's, you know, obviously giving his information right here as well. Well, chefs, thank you for your time. It's it's always uh, wonderful to have you here and our audience. We want to thank you as well for your, your valuable time. Be sure to take a look at the cookbook that was uh, recently published on Strata.io. Check out the hub for the what's coming next. Get started, you know, working with it in the Mavericks.strata.io and use the app right now. And last but not least, we just want to thank you all for having joined us. With that, we bid you all adieu.